Well, hello. Welcome to DIY Design by CCW. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. Well, today, as you can see, I will be doing a DIY for you. I have several glass pieces that I am going to make over, and hopefully I'll make them into a set. Now, I'm going to be painting today, and I'll be using one of my favorite colors of all time. And it is this beautiful purple topaz uh, made by Treasure Gold. And so it is a folk art paint. Now, I have a thrifted uh, cylinder vase that I'll be working on, as well as this Dollar Tree soap container. I have one of my favorite ginger jar vases. And uh, this is a thrifted vase, as well as some Dollar Tree uh, containers that I'm going to use. And I'm hoping when I'm done, they will look like a set. Now I have rhinestone trim as well as some pearls. I have some brooches, uh, crystals and things like that that I'll be using today. And again, I hope you like how the set turns out. Now, before I do anything, the first thing I'm going to do is go off camera and clean these pieces thoroughly with this alcohol. This is an important step if you want to be sure that the paint adheres well to the glass. Okay, so let's get right into it. Now, the first thing you want to do is mix your paint very well. Now, here you see I am using a plastic cup and a spoon. I want to, you know, I use things like that so that when I'm done, I can just throw everything away. And once I'm sure that the paint is mixed uh, adequately, then I'll start painting. Now, the brushes that I'm using uh, are uh, brushes that are rated for acrylic. You can use any brand that you want. And I have found out it doesn't have to be a very expensive brand. Uh, these particular uh, brushes, I think one came from Walmart. The other one came from Joanne Fabrics. You can order them on the internet wherever you want, but just make sure that they say acrylic brushes. Now, uh, here you'll see I'm applying the first coat. And the trick to this and to get the paint to adhere and to be streak free is to really take your time and apply the coats uh, of paint in layers. Now, if you're new and you haven't seen this before, I'll tell you that you want to keep your brush strokes as even as possible go in the same direction as much as possible and this first coat should be light and it should be even. Now this particular paint uh, when you add that first coat you're going to notice that it's very translucent so if that's not the look that you want you want to let your paint dry and then add layers. Now what I typically do is let that first uh, layer of paint dry for a minimum of a couple of hours. Occasionally I will let it dry overnight if I'm not in a hurry. The longer you let it dry the better. Then come back and add your second and then if you need more your third coat. So that's what I'll be doing here. Now you're going to see me paint all of the pieces with at least that first coat. Then I'll let them dry uh, then I'll come back and do the other coats off camera and then we'll go ahead and start adding some embellishments.
All right, so before we get to the embellishments, we want to go ahead and seal this paint. Now, you've got a couple options for sealing the paint. You can work with a Mod Podge sealer. It does work. This Mod Podge Ultra can be great, but I prefer uh, Select Seal, uh, which is made by Folk Art, and it's made specifically for this purpose. Um, again, you see that uh, I am going to pour a little bit out rather than spraying it on because I have found that when I do that, it will I will end up with uh, streaks. And um, the best way I have found is just to apply it with a sponge applicator. And these are those sponge applicators that you can pick up at any Dollar Tree or any craft store. So you want to go ahead and apply this. Um, try to make sure that you catch any drips and that you get this on evenly. Now it does dry clear. However, if you leave it kind of streaky and let it uh, kind of just drip all over the all over the pieces you would actually see that in your finish so i usually work with two sponge applicators one that is wet you know as i'm dipping it into the solution and then the other is a dry applicator to kind of help me go over the piece and make sure that uh, I catch any streaks and that I even out the coverage. But that's basically it. Now what I do typically is I start by doing the tops of the pieces. I let this dry for at least another hour. Two hours would be even better. I'll come back and do the bottom of the pieces as well. What it does is make sure that your pieces stay painted um, even as you're applying, you know, embellishments. Also, if you plan to use your piece somewhere where it might be wet, you know, or anything like that, it is going to help uh, the, the paint to stay adhered and for your piece to look beautiful for years to come. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some embellishments. Now, I'm using uh, pearls and diamonds for this piece. That's kind of what I had in my mind, uh, that I wanted to do something with topaz, diamonds, and pearls. So, of course, I'm using rhinestone trim. It's not actually diamond, but... Um, it is beautiful. I love it. I use it all the time. And in fact, you've probably seen it many times on this channel if you follow the channel. It's a, a trim that comes from Joanne Fabrics and uh, it's meant to be an iron on, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. So here you see I'm applying my favorite glue for this type of application, which is uh, basically the E the E6000 quick hold. I like that it's thin and uh, that it has a quick hold and to me it's perfect for applying uh, this type of trim and it dries clear but use whatever glue you like of course it's your choice but I would make sure that it is a glue that dries clear uh, so that it doesn't mar your piece and uh, you'll see here that I'm just going to apply this trim uh, until I like what I what you know the look and then I'll add uh, a brooch and um, and I'll move on and actually for these pieces rather than brooches I am using uh, buttons um, and actually I'm kind of using a mix because um, I had a couple of these pearl buttons with little rhinestones I had a pearl brooch that was left over from an, another project and then I had uh, some pearl stickers that were actually left over from some uh, from a piece or rather from some ornaments that I made last year for Christmas. So I'm combining them and I hope it all comes together and that it looks right, but you'll let me know. So, all right, guys, I'm going to stop talking, let you watch me work, and I'll come back when we get to another part of today's DIY.
Okay, so before we get to the final reveal, I'll go ahead and show you and talk about how I do lids. Um, again, if you have followed my channel, you've seen me do this a hundred or more times, probably hundreds of times. But just in case uh, you, you're new and you don't follow the channel, or if this is your first time seeing one of the videos, I want to explain why I make the lids. First of all, um, all of the pieces I create, I like them to have dual purposes or multiple purposes. I don't typically make things that are just decor. I like to make things that are for you can be used for storage and in your kitchen, your restroom, your bathroom, or just serve some purpose. So to do that, typically a lot of the pieces I make, I will create lids. Now I have um, evolved this process a lot over the years. I used to just use mirrors. Then I started using more of these acrylic discs and you can find these discs. Uh, they're on my in my Amazon shop, uh, really affordable. You can get a pack of them. Um, and this is my favorite brand, the one that I'm working with right now. It's the right thickness. And I love the fact that it's got the tabs that kind of make it a little easier if you're going to apply anything to the edge of the acrylic. When, when I first started working with this acrylic, <clears throat> I didn't realize that I should leave the outer film on until after I glue on my little decorative trim, which in this case is the same rhinestone trim that I'm using for the, uh, that I used for the, the pieces. And let's just say I ruined a few of these. So now I know better. So this is a different brand because that I'm working with for the larger lid, just because the company that I like that has the uh, tabs that make it, you know, that make it a little easier to pull off the film, they don't have anything in this size. So the smaller uh, discs are three inch, I believe, or three and a half, and this is a five inch disc. And uh, you want to make sure it's a a good thickness too if it's too thin it'll be a little more difficult to work with so try to get something that's at least a quarter of an inch thick if you can so to do this one what I do since it doesn't have the tabs you'll notice that I just basically pulled a little bit of the film back uh, in a certain place so that once I get this glued on, I can go ahead and peel off the film. Now I'm going to go back to the smaller lids that I did first because hopefully the glue has started to set a little bit and I can carefully peel off the film without getting anything on the acrylic. Once you get that glue on this acrylic, it is very, very hard to get it off. And then I'm just going to glue on my knobs. Now, these are regular knobs that you can buy on Amazon uh, or you can buy them at Home Goods. You can buy them. Uh, they're not expensive. You can buy many, you know, several of them in a pack and um, they're made for dresser drawers or for upgrading dresser drawers and for some time ago i started using them as knobs and i also use them as legs for my decorative trays now here if you want this knob to be perfectly centered i would suggest that you measure i'm bad about that so I'll tell you that I, I usually just eyeball it uh, and it comes out pretty good. But if you want it perfect and you're one that has an eye for that, then I would suggest you measure and then use a little marker or something to mark your spot. So there it is. That's how I make the lids. And then this is how the set turned out. I hope I like it. I hope you like it. Now let's just kind of take a closer look. So there is the vase and I really like it. I like the way I did the swag there on the side. That's a, a look that I've done before and I do like it. There's how the little decorative jars, uh, Dollar Tree jars come at, came out. Uh, now we're just taking another close up look at the vase. That's how the cylinder came out. 
and uh, the little Dollar Tree soap container, or I'm going to use it as a lotion container because this is going to be on a dresser. Now, the mirror that you see below these pieces, that comes from another DIY, uh, but it does have the pearl brooch. So I decided to display the pieces on top of that, but uh, I'll make sure that I link that video in the description box. So anyway, guys, that's how today's DIY turned out. I hope you like it. Please leave me a comment and let me know. I always like to know, is this a set you would make? First of all, do you even like the set? And if you do, would you make it? Would you keep it? And would you give it or would you give it away? Also, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll do that today and go and visit my other channels. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day or night. Bye-bye.